Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about system bandwidth. We are going to see that bandwidth is basically another type of performance metric that can be used to assess how well a system performs. If you watched some of our previous videos, we saw when we were discussing time domain analysis, how you can develop performance metrics like percent overshoot, settling time, rise time, things like that. Bandwidth is just another type of way to assess the performance of a system, but it's almost uh, looking at it from a frequency perspective. Conceptually, all bandwidth is, is asking is how fast can a system track a given input before the performance starts to degrade in some sense. And usually that definition of degrade or losing performance is usually measured with respect to the DC gain. So mathematically, one convenient definition here of bandwidth, you'll see a lot of different discussions on bandwidth, especially it depends on which field uh, of engineering you're looking at. But from our perspective of controls engineering, you'll typically see bandwidth defined as the frequency of the system f where the response drops three decibels from the DC gain. So let's just write that down. So omega bandwidth here, it's really, it's a frequency. The frequency, uh, I guess we should say, of input before system response drops three decibels from the DC gain. Okay. Uh, and, and notice that this definition is, has nothing to do with linear or nonlinear. It's really just asking about how quickly can I change an input signal before the output signal is not able to track that or it drops three decibels from the DC gain. So for example, right, you could have a, a very complicated system. Let's say you've got some kind of a which is controlled by a uh, maybe like an inner loop controller. Right, and you have your standard feedback scheme here. Um, you might even have like a, like a pre-filter here. Uh, you might even have a, like a feed forward component here. What I'm just trying to get at is that you could have a complicated block diagram here or a complicated system with lots of connections. Um, maybe you've even got like an outer loop controller here. Right, and this finally goes back into here, and you have a, a, a finally a reference signal coming in on one side, and then you've got an output signal on the other end. And all I'm trying to get at is, uh, you could have a very complicated system, right? Now, all bandwidth is asking is, what kind of inputs or what sine waves, what frequency of sine waves can I put into the reference? before all of this gobbledygook, your pre-filters, your, your feed forward, your controllers, all that kind of stuff, it's gonna try to act on this and it's gonna try to follow this reference signal and you're gonna get something out on the other end of the same frequency ideally, right? If it was a linear system. Again, remember, none of these have to be linear. These could be if statements, non-linear systems. This could be a real complicated system here and all bandwidth is asking is, how quickly can all of this follow that type of, uh, of, a, of a time varying input here? So this shows up and it's very convenient to talk about bandwidth here for, for many types of systems. So why don't we take a look at an example of a real world system here, uh, a real live situation where we can look at applying bandwidth. Okay, so to demonstrate bandwidth with a real system, we just need to find a system. It doesn't even have to be linear. It could be nonlinear. It could be a complicated system. All that matters is that it's trying to track some kind of a reference input. So for our illustrative purposes, let's maybe use this laser pointer and I've got these two blue lines here on the floor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sinusoidal input of the laser pointer between those two lines. And now I just need some system to try to track that laser pointer. And we want to understand how does the system's efficiency change as a function of sinusoidal input frequency. So I guess all I need to do now is find some kind of a system that will do this. Oh, I think you'll do nicely. Okay, let's start with a slow sine wave. Okay, let's increase the frequency. All right, let's go even faster. super fast.
Okay, so we saw in that example with the dog, right, we could almost try to quantify the response or make a very crude experimental plot here of what was going on. So what we could say here is, you know, the input was the laser pointer, right? And maybe we could start thinking about what is the input frequency omega here? So this is in like, say, radians per second, right? And what we saw here was the output was basically the position of the dog here, right? Was the dog able to actually follow it? So maybe we could ask and say, you know, here is, is, is we'll say this is follows input, right? So in this case, when we started at a low frequency, right, where the laser pointer was just moving back and forth slowly between, remember we had the two, we had a, a blue line here and a blue line, and if the red laser pointer was only going slowly, between these two signals, you know, moving very, very slowly, the actual dog was able to, so here, uh, the dog, maybe let me, let me try to draw a dog, I'm a horrible artist. Two, three, four, and then we got a tail. Oh boy, that, that, that doesn't look anything like a dog. Well, you get what I'm trying to say. But the dog's head was able to follow it back and forth, right? And he was able to get between those two blue lines, no problem, right? So at low frequencies, the system was able to to track this, right? But now, as we start increasing the frequency, right, the laser pointer still moved between these two blue lines, but we were going a little bit faster, and now the dog was not able to actually go all the way from end to end, right? He was only able to go, you know, maybe something like that, right? So at like a medium frequency, the dog was able to, you know, not do so well right and then as we went even higher right as we started moving this laser pointer super super quick right the dog did nothing right the dog just sat there and freaked out right he just sat there and just his head moved side to side it was like he's just staring at the thing going all right he just couldn't even move the system couldn't track the frequency of the input here so in this case at high frequencies uh, the, the system output was, was very much attenuated, right? And maybe we should have put like, you know, probably at, you know, some of these other medium frequencies he was probably still able to track. And then it starts, performance starts rolling off, right? If you look at this type of a plot, hopefully something is ringing uh, a bell in the back of your head, right? If you think about this long enough, this is basically a Bode plot, right? And it's only a Bode plot of the magnitude that we care about. Right? So I don't really necessarily care about the phase shift here. Now, the thing we should think about here is which Bode plot is this, uh, is, do, do we care about? And, I, and, I, and I'm, this is too bad I erased, I just erased the, the big giant crazy block diagram that we had here. But if you think about this long enough, um, if we come up with a very simple model of this system here, you had the plant which was like the dog's body, right? Let's call it maybe like the body. It's controlled by his brain or he's got some kind of controller on him. Right? And then maybe there's like a sensor, like his, his eyes have some kind of response here. Right? And it feeds back here to the laser pointer here. So here's R of T and here's Y of T. Right? So the Bode plot that we want to plot here to kind of get an understanding of this, if you think about this, it's really, we want the closed loop Bode plot. So I want to smash this entire block diagram down to like a closed loop system, right? Which is just the, the entire dog, right? Where you put in R of T and out comes Y of T, right? And this is the response that we're interested. I wanna know how fast can the actual entire dog system with the brain, eyes, can, uh, all that kind of stuff, track that laser pointer input. So what we wanna do is look at the Bode plot of the closed loop system to, to, to try to generate the uh, estimation or measure the bandwidth of the system. So let's just write that down because this is, uh, is key and a lot of times we're gonna have other discussions on Bode plots and you're gonna see other people like to talk about loop transfer functions and loop Bode plots. But in this case, when you're talking about bandwidth, we should say that bandwidth is measured from the closed loop. I'll underline that, right? Bode plot. Okay? Okay, so tell you what, um, 
let's go through an example how about of a uh, uh, a linear system we're going to see that if you have a linear system we can actually make some nice estimates and uh, we can do some nice an uh, analysis to try to understand what the bandwidth of that system is okay let's look at an example now of a linear system and in particular what i want to look at here is controlling the velocity uh, of a dc motor Okay, so in one of our previous videos, we actually discussed how to model a DC motor uh, using differential equations and actually how to obtain a linear transfer function model of a DC motor. And one of the transfer functions that we derived in this case was, we called it GV, where this is really talking about the um, angular speed or theta dot, right? How that changes depending on what armature voltage you apply to the motor. So again, you guys, uh, I'm sure everyone here is an engineer and, and understands what a DC motor is. A DC motor, right, is you give it a voltage, right? You apply some voltage to the, to the system and the motor is going to spin at some rate theta dot, right? And it might take time to spin up from a, from a zero initial condition. There might be overshoot. You know, who, who knows how this thing behaves? That's what this G V of S transfer function is going to capture, right? It's going to capture the, the behavior of velocity to armature voltage here. And I think what we said here is just for completeness, if you want from our, from our previous video, feel free to check it out. But we said that, okay, this transfer function can be given by, uh, it's kind of it's a mishmash of car. And this really doesn't matter for our discussion, but in the interest of completeness, I'll just write it down here. So it's machine constant, mechanical machine constant over moment of inertia times the inductance of the motor is in the numerator. And then in the denominator, you got S squared plus this ugly quantity here of uh, CLA plus JMR plus JMRM. Uh, J over JMLA times S plus uh, this other ugly quantity here of KT KV plus CR plus CRM all over JMLA. Okay, so again, it's a bit mishmash of constants and really is not terribly relevant to our discussion on, on bandwidth. I just want to put it down for completeness here. If you plug in numbers for all of these, like the moment of inertia, the inductance, the damping coefficient, the machine constants, the resistance of the motors, all that kind of stuff, this just looks like a second order transfer function here, right? So for our purposes, let's just plug in constants that we derive, that we obtained earlier for one of the models that we were looking at and just look at this from a mathematical perspective where all this thing looks like is a number on top, right? Which happens to be 4, 6, uh, 163 all over S squared plus 1021 S plus 4845. Uh, okay, so maybe this is a better way to think about it just think about it it's a second order transfer function that's all the, the all the plant is right and now what i want to do here is oh well i want this motor to spin at some speed that i specify so to do that we're going to use a, a pretty classic control architecture right our single loop feedback system where we've got some kind of controller let's call this thing C V of S for it's the controller which kind of tries to control the velocity and now what we're able to do is we're able to put in or specify some omega desired right that's how fast I want the motor to spin at and here's how fast the motor is going to actually spin right so this is my entire uh, system which is trying to control motor velocity right Okay, so if we're discussing about bandwidth here, we saw, okay, I need to compute the closed loop transfer function of this system because I want to understand how does the actual speed of the motor respond to the commanded desired speed of the motor. So we need to smash down this block diagram into a single block. And I think you guys have seen our, the, the previous video on block diagram algebra. We see that this thing just looks like, uh, what is it? It's going to be a uh, CV times GV all over one plus CV times GV, right? 
So this gets me my closed loop transfer function between the commanded or the desired velocity and the actual theta dot velocity of the motor here, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and just, uh, I, I guess what we should now do is we should pick what type of a controller we want to use here. So let's go ahead and say, let's do something very simple. Let's just use a static gain K, all right? So my controller is not gonna have any dynamics. I mean, it could, Band there's nothing in this bandwidth discussion that says this has to be a linear controller. We're just gonna pick something very simple for, to, to make the analysis and the numbers work out nice, okay? So if it's just a constant number K here, you can, uh, well, I guess just plug all this in. Here's GV, here's CV, plug into our expression for the closed loop transfer function here. Let's call that thing TV, how about? This is, TV is our closed loop transfer function between theta dot of s and omega desired of s. And what this thing looks like is if you if you run the numbers here, you basically get four, six, um, one, six, three times k in the numerator, and then you get s squared plus uh, 10, 21 s plus quantity of four, eight, four, five plus four, six, one, six, three k, right? Okay. So as expected here, uh, K works its way into the dynamics of the closed loop system. So why don't we go ahead and investigate um, the closed loop, uh, uh, the Bode plot of this, right? This is the, the Bode plot of the closed loop system here. So let's start off with some value of K here. So let's how about choose uh, K of, uh, how about a half, 0 0.5, right? Okay, and if that's the case, um, well, you can see just plug in a half for K everywhere. This thing comes out to uh, something like four, six, one, six, three, all over two S squared plus 20, 42 S uh, plus five, five, eight, five, three. I guess you could divide everything by two if you really want the S squared uh, to have a coefficient of one. But anyway, th this is what you end up with. So let's go run over to MATLAB, plug this in and uh, into MATLAB and just use the Bode function to get the Bode plot of this closed loop transfer function so we can try to see what the bandwidth is. All right, so here we are in MATLAB and let's go ahead and explore how to compute slash measure the system bandwidth. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our normal clear, CLC, close all. And now what we need to do is first let's go ahead and define the plant, which we said was uh, GV, right? And I think uh, we had a numerator, which was on top, if you remember, it was 46163. I think it was just a constant. And then the denominator of that was S squared and then 1021S and then 4845. Okay, and then let's just go make our GV object using the transfer function or the TF command okay and then let's go ahead and define the controller that we were using cv of s so this is going to help us complete the um block diagram right so i think we said that this was just a constant k in the numerator right oops sorry this just be cv num and then cv den for the denominator is uh well it's just a one right <laughs> and i guess we should probably define k k is 0 0.5 i think is what we said we were going to we're going to start with which is a half Okay, so now our uh, CV here is going to be a TF of CV num and CV den. Okay, so let's just go ahead and actually tell you what. I will take off the uh, semicolons so we don't su suppress the output. Let's just go and run this, make sure this all looks pretty reasonable. All right, so here's my plant transfer function, and here's my uh, controller transfer function. So now what we want to do is let's compute the closed-loop transfer function, which we called TV. Right, so this was uh, I think we said was C times G all over one plus C times G, right? That's what we ended up with. And tell you what, again, I will su uh, not suppress the output here, and let's run this again. Okay. Uh, 
here we go. This is what we got, and maybe this is a good point to uh, just bump in. If you haven't watched our video on uh, MinReal, right? MATLAB has a fun function called MinReal, which is going to help us do pull zero cancellation. Because if you look at this long enough, something should be going clang in your head, right? We started off with a second order plant, and there's a zeroth order transfer function. So how in the world did you end up with a fourth order closed loop transfer function? That's clearly not correct, right? There should still only be uh, two poles or a second order. So basically, there's some pole zero cancellation that's not being taken into account. So what we need to do here is I need to wrap this command here with min real, right? And again, just to refresh your memory, if I say help min real, this is going to get a minimal realization and perform that pull zero cancellation. So again, watch our other video on min real if you would like to discuss this a little bit further. But again, if we put that there and run, now we're talking. This looks reasonable, and this looks like what we had up on the board. Of course, on the board, I think we had a we multiplied the top and bottom by two, and that's how you would get exactly what we had on the on the whiteboard. But they are equivalent. So now to get the bandwidth of the system, we said we just need to look at the Bode plot of the closed loop system. So let's just say, put a little comment here and say uh, plot the closed loop Bode plot to measure bandwidth. So I'm going to start a new figure, and I'm just going to say Bode of the closed loop system, right? Okay, so now if I run this, I'll pull it over on this screen. Here's what our Bode plot looks like. Now, what we said here is the bandwidth is where does the system drop 3 dB from its DC gain? So here, at low frequencies, notice again that this is nice and flat here. And maybe the other thing to notice here is, actually, check it out. The DC gain is not unity in this case. It's not zero. Uh, sorry, it's not zero, right? So what this is implying here is actually there's a little bit of attenuation right off the bat. Even at very, very, very low frequencies, um, the system is not actually tracking completely the input here. But it's not degraded in the sense that it stays at this value of about minus 1.66 for a good long bit of input frequency. So all during these input frequencies, the system is not degraded, right? It doesn't degrade until we start dropping. So I'm going to look for something that is a little bit further um, than this. What I need here is we need to look for where it drops three decibels. So it starts off, the DC gain is about minus 1.66. So I'm looking for where this thing goes to minus 4.66. So I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Uh, okay, it's somewhere around. Uh, here we go. That's pretty darn good. So we see here that at a frequency of around 28 radians per second, the system has dropped about... Uh, three decibels from its DC gain. So in this case, the bandwidth of the system is 28 radians per second. Okay, so in this case, we see that the bandwidth is approximately 28 radians per second, right? And just to reiterate how we got that, right, the thing that's important in the bandwidth calculation is actually just the magnitude of the Bode plot and we're going to plot this thing in decibels. So in this case here, we had omega in radians per second on the x-axis. And all you basically do to compute bandwidth here is, A, you go ahead and plot the Bode plot, right? So we get maybe something like this, okay? And all we're going to do here is look at where's the DC gain of the system. So here's DC gain. And what you need to do now is just compute where does it drop three decibels from this value here. So I'll draw another line here at three decibels below the DC gain here. And then wherever the system crosses, that is basically your bandwidth of the system. So I'll maybe draw this in another color just so we get... Okay, so here is omega bandwidth, right? So here's omega bandwidth. Sorry, and this is omega on the x-axis. Right. So the again, the idea with the bandwidth uh, calculation is it basically tells us that the system in this range here, as long as the input frequencies are below the bandwidth here, the system should be able to operate without uh, degradation slash attenuation. Right. So that's how we're measuring degradation is how much does it attenuate from the DC gain.
right? So notice here, one thing that we should maybe mention is that obviously the DC gate, or sorry, the bandwidth is a function of the entire system, right? The plant, the controller, any other blocks that are in here. So for example, what if we went back to our system and instead of choosing a K of 0.5, let's bump up the gain here of the controller. Let's choose something a little bit more aggressive and see what we end up with. So tell you what, let's change this to instead of 0.5, Let's make the controller, how about 5.5, right? Which would then change this transfer function. I actually don't know if I have it computed um, right off the back, but it would basically be you take this here, substitute 5.5 in, and you would get a different closed loop system. And you know what? I bet that's gonna change the bandwidth of the system. So let's go back over to Simulink, or sorry, to MATLAB, and see if that's the case here. How does changing the controller to be a little bit more aggressive change the bandwidth of the system? Okay, so here we are back at our script, and the change is actually really simple. Instead of 0 0.5 for our controller, let's make the gain K of 5.5 and just simply rerun the script. And here is our new Bode plot. And we see that, yes, indeed, the bandwidth has changed. So one thing to note, yeah, the DC gain has changed. It's much closer to zero in this case. So this aggressive controller helped in that sense. But, you know, that's not actually what we're terribly uh, focused on right now. So we see the DC gain is about, I don't know, let's call it, let's call it minus 0 0.17 or something like that. So now I'm looking for where do we go 3 dB down. So I want 3.17 <clears throat> or negative 3.17. Ah, that, that's pretty close. So here we go. Look at this. Instead of a 28 radian per second bandwidth that we had earlier, now we've almost got a 324 uh, radians per second bandwidth. So that controller change definitely affected the bandwidth of the system here. So to, to help drive this home of what bandwidth actually does and how it physically can be interpreted, right? I've just got a very simple Simulink model built which is exactly the system that we had uh earlier so let's start with the the less aggressive controller of uh 0 0.5 and what i've got here is i've got a sine wave here of frequency yeah something pretty slow if you remember in this case when we had a lower gain on the controller the bandwidth was around 28 radians per second so this input frequency of two radians per second is well below the bandwidth and what I'm going to do here is let's run this and we can look at how the input sine wave compares to the output sine wave. And to avoid this going super duper quick here so we can't even see anything, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually put in a block from the aerospace block set. If I come here, I think it's, yeah, here we go. Animation support utilities. I want a simulation pace block. This is going to force the Simulink model to run in real time so that when I look at the scope, uh things will be reasonable here. So in the sense, let me hit play and then I'll drag this over. Okay, so we can see the Simulink model's running in real time. I've just got the final time set for infinity. So we should see this just continually going on and on. Now you can see in this case, right? Uh, everything is hunky-dory in the sense that it's not attenuating past the DC gain. We see there is some attenuation, but that's just due to the DC gain. And in fact, you can see that by the, uh, if we just increase this, I don't know, to five radians per second. See, notice, the, the, there's no roll off. There's no additional roll off. We haven't reached that break frequency yet. We can keep going 10 radians per second. We still haven't reached the bandwidth of the system. So the overall system is still tracking the input, right? But as we start approaching that bandwidth value, now there's, I don't know, I guess you can see the blue line is a little bit be, uh, lower than what it used to be. So we're starting to get some roll off. And as we start going past the bandwidth, say like 30 radians a second, you can see we're now starting to get degradation, right? The blue line, its amplitude is going down, 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 right? So in fact, if I jack this up even more here, let's go up to like 100 radians per second. And we see the blue line is way attenuated at this point, right? Now, we saw that the bandwidth was a function of uh, the overall system or the controller. So again, let's go back to a slow frequency of, I don't know, 2 radians per second. And let's up the controller now. So let's make the controller or the overall system ch dynamics change. We'll go up to 5.5. And here we go. And okay, now you can see that, wow, this is actually great. This controller is much better in the sense that it is tracking. The DC gain is pretty much zero at this point, right? Zero decibels. So we should be able to increase the frequency of this sine wave. And in fact, let's go... Uh, 30 was already above the old bandwidth, but we see now that 
we're below the current bandwidth of the system, right? With the higher, more aggressive controller, we said the bandwidth was like about 324 radians per second, right? So look at this. Blue is still tracking yellow, and I can increase the bandwidth. I can keep making the system go faster and faster. Let's go up to 200. Okay, we're getting a little bit of roll off now here. Um, and I think, what did we say was the actual bandwidth? It was like 300 something, right? So here we go. Let's go 300. Yeah, it's starting to attenuate a little bit here, but not a ton. But we can keep going here. Now let's pass the bandwidth. Let's go to 400. And now we're seeing, yes, it's starting to roll off. So as I keep increasing the input frequency here, we're going to just keep getting more and more roll off and more and more degradation here. So now we are past the bandwidth of the system, and you can see it's not able to track the input any longer here. So uh, with that, I think this is a good discussion on bandwidth of the system. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. We are going to use this as a jumping off point now, and I hope you'll catch us at our next video where we talk about a tool set, namely the control systems designer, that's going to help us analyze a lot of different performance metrics simultaneously, bandwidth, percent overshoot, settling time, all of that stuff in sort of a, a one-stop shop. So if you like the video, please uh, subscribe to the channel because, like I said, we're going to have a lot more discussions on control systems and other engineering topics in the future. So I hope to catch you at one of those videos. I'll talk to you later. Bye.